Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to Trinity Reformed United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I want to thank you for joining us here in person as well as online, and hope that you are truly fed by the worship of our God this day. I've been announcing on a weekly basis the financial situations that we find ourselves. While many of you cannot afford to increase your offerings, there is something everyone can do to help the church. You received the notice this past week about the $25,000 that we have taken from the grocery card and money market funds over the last seven months. Currently, the grocery card account has $14,000 remaining. If grocery card sales increase, we can actually replace the money that was used. This means that if you purchase grocery cards, rather than paying cash at Weiss or Giant, the church benefits greatly. Remember, you're purchasing the cars at the cash value you would be spending and not paying anything more. If you buy a $25 card, for $25. 
the grocery cards, the grocery stores give us either a 5% or a 10% uh, return on the value of the card. Please let your friends and your neighbors know about this fundraiser. And as we report each week, you can pick them up and, or have them delivered to you. So please support the church by buying grocery cards from, from Trinity. Thank you. On Friday, September 9th, Trinity Reformed UCC will carry, will, will hold a carry out fall festival. Menu items and pickup times will be announced in the very near future. So September 9th, carry out fall festival with all kinds of wonderful goodies. Tuesday, August 16th, we will be holding our monthly consistory meeting at 6.30 in person and on Zoom. If you'd like to join us, please come to Jubilee Hall at 6.30 on Tuesday or send me an email and I will send you the Zoom invite. We hope to see you there as we will be discussing our future. Trinity's Bookhouse on the Bell continues, continues to desperately need children's books. If you have any, please bring them to the church on Sunday or simply drop them off Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday during office hours. And we thank you very much for helping our community here in Bloomsburg. We are actively collecting for the food pantry as well. Items can be left on the table in the front of the crying room at the rear of the sanctuary. So please consider dropping off some non-perishable food items for those less fortunate than yourself. Grocery cards, as I mentioned, are continued to be on for are on are on them yeah, continue to be for sale. Excuse me. Cards will be on sale in the narthex after service, or as I mentioned earlier, you can call the church office for Weiser Giant cards and pick them up or have them delivered. This has been an amazing fundraiser for the church and one that helps us not only stay open but continues our mission work in the community as well. And if you need assistance or know someone who might need a phone call or a visit, please let us know. The visitation team is ready to lift the spirits of those who need it. And as I remind you each week, please be careful out there. Wear your mask around large crowds or confined spaces. Cough and sneeze in your elbow. Wash your hands frequently. Get your vaccines as well as your boosters. And if you noticed, I didn't say social distance because the CDC has now lifted social distancing. So you can see there's no more yellow and green markers on the pews. So this is a wonderful way, of course, to show your love for yourself as well as love for your neighbor by, taking, by being very careful out there. And finally, as we prepare for worship, let us empty our minds of anything that would distract you from realizing the presence of God's Holy Spirit during this time of worship. Let us now experience God's Spirit, as we join together in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship found on the walls and on your screens. Return, beloved of God, to the fold. God welcomes you this hour of prayer. God calls us by name and awaits our coming. God summons us out of hiding. God is like a shepherd caring for her flocks. God is like a gardener carefully tending his vines. Surely God has provided richly for us. Our lives are sustained by God's good gifts. Worship the one who longs for our coming. Sing praise to the one who expects our faithfulness. We call on God who gives us life. May God's face shine on us to save us. Join now in our opening prayer. My Lord, what a morning. Page 708 or on the walls and the screens. <laughs>
join me in the opening prayer found on the walls and on your screens. Surrounded by a rich heritage of faith, we seek to know you, God, in this time of worship. Thankful for our spiritual ancestors, we return to our roots to find our true identity. We lay aside all that weighs us down and fills us with doubts so we can give attention to your call and your message. Meet us here, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Sometimes we deceive ourselves with pious pretense, but God is not fooled. Sometimes we're led astray by the lies and empty promises of the marketplace, but God does not change the rules to accommodate our whims. We busy ourselves with our own agendas, but God continues to have a better plan for us. Stop now to evaluate your relationship with God and let us confess our sins by reciting the prayer of confession found on the walls and on your screens. Oh God, after all you have done for us, we have failed to bear fruit for you. We have turned away from your word and have forgotten to call on your name. People who are weak, lonely, and destitute receive little help from our hands because we are preoccupied with our own concerns. Lift us from the shadows of our own deceits and let your face shine on us so we may walk once more in your truth. Amen. Now let us confess our personal sins in silence. Lord, hear our prayers. When we are penitent, God restores us to our rightful identity as children of the Most High. God lights a fire within us so we can change our world for the better. In the name of Jesus Christ, we endure the, who endured the cross for us, we dare to come out of hiding to speak up for justice and peace. <laughs> Please be seated. This is our time of moments with the children and a time where I ask the kids to gather around their computer screens and as I have a few questions for you this morning. I want to ask you, what do you need to be a good runner, like on a track team or cross country team? Good running shoes, shorts, maybe a tank top shirt. Now, do you think that you might need a, a role model or maybe even a coach? to help you, help you as well? Exactly. Because role models are those who were good runners in their day that can be examples for what we need to do to be good runners today. Coaches also teach us and encourage us to achieve our goals, to get faster. Now, did you know that we need role models and coaches in the Christian faith as well? Well, we do. Role models like King David, Samuel, and the prophets, and a coach like Jesus. Jesus is our coach because he teaches us and encourages us, running ahead of us through the suffering of the cross to the joy of life in heaven. Now, do you know any role models in your families, or maybe in your church, or people who have faced challenges and achieved goals? Sure, I think you know some, because they keep us on the right track, and they are examples for us to follow. And in our lives, we need Jesus as our coach to teach us how to run through all the problems of life all the way to heaven. And that's my challenge for you. I want you to look at the role models in your life, people who have faced challenges, and yet they still achieve their goals. Then I want you to use Jesus as your coach 
Now, what does Jesus teach us to and encourages us to do? Love our neighbors. That's right. Love our neighbors. To take care of others and to be kind toward others. So, do you think you can do all that? I bet you can. Let us pray. Coach Jesus, help us to look to you whenever we have a challenge in our life so that we can be guided to achieving our goals of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson for this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 29 through chapter 12, verse 2. The faith we receive through Jesus Christ is a faith deeply rooted in the people of God across the ages. The great cloud of witness provides guidance and companionship on the pilgrim's trail, beginning in verse 29. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had encircled the seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats and destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commanded for their faith, did not receive what was promised since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight of the sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Here ends the first reading. Our gospel reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. Jesus reminded us that the way to the coming reign of God will not preclude trials and discord. Our weak attempts at peace will need to give way to God's eternal peace. Beginning in verse 49. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is, a, until it is completed. Do you think I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, Rat, but rather division. From now, on five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearances of the earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Blessed are those who hear the word of our God and believe. Let us pray. That which we try to trust and obey, help us to live our lives in your realm. 
Help us to persevere our suffering and always look to Jesus as our perfecter and comforter as we pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth might be pleasing and acceptable to you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Struggling seems to be plentiful among Christians today as well as in the past. Mainline church attendance is in, is in decline, along with the offerings, which make every day challenging, every day's every day challenging and quite discouraging. Members of the early church, early church also struggled with discour discouragement, as seen in our epistle lesson this morning. This was the issue faced by the author of Hebrews. Cri Jewish Christians were discouraged and demoralized. They felt excluded from the mainstream of society and felt political pressure from the Jewish religious establishment. This passage is to encourage the Jewish Christians community to stay faithful to God in the face of the challenges of life. The writer gives examples of those who trusted God and were saved and to those who didn't and ended up perishing. The Israelites, as they crossed the Red Sea waters and those at Jericho who all survived while the Egyptians who did not survive, who did not worship God, perished. It is a little disheartening to think that if you don't believe in God, you could perish. But we'll talk about that a little later. And the writer of Hebrews includes additional examples from the Old Testament. Gideon, who defeats the Midianites, Samson and his great strength, Samuel, who anoints King Saul, and others who showed great faith in God. These Old Testament stories are ones that the writer's audience would have been very familiar with that this passage was meant to encourage those who were suffering to trust the God who stayed true to their ancestors in the faith and stay, will stay true to them as well. This passage also points us to the suffering of Christ and the outcome that it brought. For, those, for, just, for just as those who suffered were commended and yet did not see the promise given to them by God, God gave them something better to be made perfect. God wants us to depend on God for our salvation. Hebrews 11 challenges us to endure suffering and to look to Jesus, who endured the cross and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. God isn't calling us to martyrdom, but rather to endurance, persevering in the name of God, who we trust and believe and will make us perfect in the end. For the author writes that Jesus endured the cross and endured suffering for the joy that was set before him. And that means that we have something to look forward to as well. Joy to be set before us, even with the challenges of life. We are to look to Jesus Christ, staying in tune with what is going on around us and not ignoring the pain that we and others are feeling, but rather just as Jesus looked to heaven, we are to look to Christ. Jesus calls us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Earlier in the sermon, I told you that we'd talk about those who don't believe in God and will perish or may perish. Well, certainly that is an us versus them statement, isn't it? And we know that Jesus suffered for all to be saved, all to be saved. And really, isn't that the point of so much suffering, evil, hate, and violence in our world today? Jesus wants to save all people. Jesus' teachings and God's commandment are given so that we can build our relationships with ourselves, our families, our neighbors, and even the stranger. When we do that, the joy is set before us. But when we don't believe in God, God's commandments or Jesus' teachings of love, suffering, evil, hate, and violence is what's left. And in our world today, we see many perish as a result of suffering, like bullying that causes some to react in horrible ways, or evil, hate, and violence, as in all the shootings that kill innocent victims 
as well as those in gangs and those engaging in criminal activity. That action is contrary to God's commandments and Jesus' teachings. It's hard to comprehend that a believer would still do such vile and despicable things. And maybe that's what the writer of Hebrews is trying to relate, that those who don't believe in the teachings of God or Jesus will perish by their own hand. It may be drugs, alcohol, involvement with crime, or gang violence, or any addiction that you don't address. You create your own hell on earth, and you may even perish from it. But what about all the suffering of those who do believe and who try to follow God's commandments and Jesus' teachings? This is where Jesus calls us to perseverance and trust in God. The challenges of life can be overwhelming at times, but the more we live our lives according to Jesus' teachings and God's commandment, the more we can persevere our suffering, our challenges, and our pain. And even if the challenge ends our time on earth, we have the promise of eternal life where we are made perfect and the joy is truly set before us. Amen. And now we will uh, continue our service with a hymn of response, All Who Love and Serve Your City, number 670 in the hymnals, on the walls, and on your screens. Give it just a second, Colleen. Please be seated. This is a time of our service. I want to remind you to take notes of the people mentioned in your in our joys and concerns and join your list today with the one from last week and place it on your refrigerator, nightstand, or coffee table. Anywhere that will remind you to share God's love with others through your prayers. This has been a vital ministry here at Trinity and one that has had some amazing results. Today, I'd like to start with asking that you please keep family, friends, and the community of those killed in the fire in Nescapec and also those who were injured at the fundraiser yesterday. Prayers for hope, peace, and strength to get through this difficult time. Just this morning in Giza, outside of Cairo, Egypt, 41 parishioners were killed in a fire 
at a Christian Coptic church. Prayers for comfort, hope, and God's gentle embrace on the church family suffering such loss. While I was in seminary, I visited uh, Cairo, Egypt, and Giza, and we went to Coptic churches in that region. So please keep them in your prayers. Alexis Faringer asked us to pray for her uncle David, who was having back surgery this week. Prayers for successful surgery, comfort, and recuperation. Jerry Lee Brobst, Ruth Ann Lemon's four-year-old great-granddaughter, is undergoing testing for leukemia. Please keep little Jerry Lee and her entire family in prayers for hope, peace, and comfort while they wait for the results. Please keep Jack our chocolate lab in your prayers. Jack is 14 years old and is having severe intestinal issues. Prayers for comfort, healing, and peace for our old guy. Also, keep my father, Cleve Hummel, in your prayers as his condition is worsening. Prayers for comfort, peace, and God's blessing on him and my mother, Rosemary. Sandy Buck has received some good news. The cancerous mass is only the size of a quarter and will be remo removed on September 8th. The doctor said she has one of the easiest cancers to treat. Continued prayers for successful surgery and recuperation. And as always, I remind you to send in your, your joys and concerns to us through email, text, or phone, and we'll be sure to include them in our next service. So now, let us pray. God of abundant grace, whose judgment is a part of your love for humankind, Bring fire among us that we may be united in faithfulness rather than divided by competing interpretations of your word and our present times. Make us not out of fear or a sense of duty, but because it is a joyful opportunity to express thanks for all we have received. As today, we ask mindfully that you watch over and comfort our friends in Christ, such as our homebound, those in life care centers, those on our prayer list, as well as those named here today. And we celebrate with you the saints of this church that serve your people with such love. Now, in a moment of silence, hear those prayers to private speak out loud. Lord, hear our prayers. May we keep these special people in our minds, in our hearts, and in our prayers as we go through this next week. And let us pray the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witness. witnesses, people of generations before us who have given their all in faithfulness to God. Much is required of those who make a faith commitment. Much is required of us. We give, however, not out of fear or sense of duty, because it is a joyful opportunity to express thanks for all we have received. So let us consider going to the church's website at www.trinityreformeducc.org or send a text with the amount you want to donate to 570-701-8479. Again, 570-701-8479. 8479 and present your offering to God online or be sending in your church envelopes as best as you are able. Those who are here in person can drop their offering in the basket at the rear of the sanctuary. <laughs> Please join me in the blessing and commission found on the walls and on your screens. God has planted and nurtured a splendid vineyard. We are vines expected to beat 
bear good fruit. No longer will we be choked out by the thorns and briars. Deceit and lies will not overcome us. God's word is more powerful than fire and earthquake. It is given to shake us from our complacency. We are aware of the weak and needy among us. We are determined to work for justice. Let the one who knows God's word speak faithfully. May all who have heard the word make response. God will restore us in time of difficulty. God will perfect and equip us from our service. Amen. And now hear this pastoral benediction. Our world is in a horrible mess right now. And the Bible helps us to see that in ancient times, that world wasn't much better then. God's sacred word tells us that we need God's word and Christ's teachings to get us through the worlds we live in, whether it was 2,000 years ago or today. God's sacred word and Christ's teachings is what will keep our heads above water when it looks like everyone is drowning around us. And yet, God gives us a way out, regardless of the outcome of the world's chaos. May we persevere the challenges of this world by being in relationship with God and hold tight to the hope God gives in eternal life. Amen. Let us conclude our service with our closing hymn, O Jesus, I Have Promised, number 612 in the hymnal, on the walls and on your screens. Go in peace.